वेलकम बैक टू इनसाइट बिल्डर चैनल डेटा लीडर्स बिग डेटा लर्नर्स एंड माय डियर फ्रेंड्स मस्ट हैव स्पार्क डीएमएल कमांड्स फॉर डेटा इंजीनियर्स एंड एनालिस्ट्स सॉल्विंग कॉमन डेटा एनालिसिस चैलेंजेस द चैलेंज सॉल्यूशन अप्रोच दिस स्लाइड लिस्ट्स वेरियस चैलेंजेस along with that the solution that spark ecosystem pi spark and spark ecosystem provides for solving those challenges we will be looking at the challenges one by one and then we will also see how it is getting solved in real time inside the kaggle notebook let us go through the challenges first we start by ingesting the data into the spark table we use read apis for that we will we have various kinds of read apis you might you might have been aware of csv json parquet and avro orc believe me there are so many other uh, uh, formats file formats that is available inside the big data ecosystem we are going to curtail ourselves to csv i meant curtail because each and every file system has its own quirks and we have to learn them very very diligently so curtail is a very right word here multiple ways of selecting columns inside the tables spark tables gives almost three different ways we will see all those and how what are the quirks or what are the uh, you know the challenges those options solve because everything inside any of the library that you come across whether it is python library java uh, functions and libraries whatever the pro programming paradigm it might be all of them has been created for solving problems programmers solve problems and they write to write these programs to help other programmers to solve the same problems so keep this in mind when you are actually you know going through my videos because that way you will learn really fast and you will remember what was used for solving the challenge okay next this is the first step right like reading and selecting is the most basic thing that an engineer and data engineer and a data analyst will do what are the functions that is available so we have to handle the null values so how to handle it in fact in spark you will find a different issue so i will show it to you in 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 the kaggle notebook when we start working with date columns one of the most frustrating aspect of working with spark is the date converting dates from string okay you it can take a lot of time if you are not if you are new to this environment okay you might think okay the project will complete in 2 hours and it will extend up to 20 hours see if the if you are not aware of how to work with the date string and related functions creating sequences statistical aggregations these are all regular activities like group by max min all these things we will be looking at we will be working on we will be looking at uh, filtering in the beginning itself a bit and uh, work on having in the part 2 of it because this is a very big uh, you know series i have tried to cover since i am actually taking the challenge solution approach what happens is the i am actually grouping it based on the challenges that you are facing the steps of challenges you, you will face right so the functions that is going to come will come from various locations inside the environment so like filtering like uh, aggregations so you will see all of these things together this way of learning actually helped me a lot to understand o overview uh, of the entire ecosystem so i feel that uh, that will be also helpful for you guys and you can leave a comment in the comment section so that i can also understand uh, better about uh, about the outcome finally checking multiple conditions by using case and case when and then this is also uh, one of the quirks that we can try to solve it so these are the things that we will be looking at first of all we need a, need the data okay most biggest challenge we face when we are trying to practice is that we need to have a data which you which is already you know at least reviewed a bit uh, starting with the data that is completely unreviewed there is a there is a challenge in that because sometimes what happens is the the libraries don't uh, it's not the libraries problem it's it's that when you are learning newly there are so many options to solve a problem as i was telling you and uh, the data set which is which you take it for uh, for that matter might not be immediately solvable by whatever uh, solutions that you know so what will happen immediately the uh, motivation actually reduces so uh, going with the set of curated data set is fine when you are learning uh, i mean when you are starting 
but after that once you are uh, confident about your skills then you need to test your confidence by actually taking a new data set and uh, trying all the options that you have got and solving the problem that the data set provides you that is how you actually develop okay and uh, these commands the way i have given it right it is uh, the reason why i have given this is these commands can actually solve most of the problems but that doesn't mean that it will solve all the problems so keep this in mind when you are uh, going through the going through this video and i would really urge that uh, you uh, the next step is that i will be showing you how to go to the uh, kaggle environment i will be sharing the link also with you guys just go to the link open the kaggle notebook uh, in parallel to this video keep the video side by side along with your browser and start practicing it and type every command guys this is the this is the key if you want to learn programming if you want to master it the key is typing the commands nothing else you don't need to understand mathematics you don't need to understand the syntax type the command and execute it once you can execute the commands then you actually slightly understand what is going on and as you start executing with different different data sets then you will see okay so this is what the command is doing see at the end of the day there are two ways to learn so you do all the research you go through the entire documentation keep it in your mind and then go for the data set which is actually not uh, not the efficient way of learning right the point here i am trying to make is that practicing is much easier than you know sitting and reading the documentation or watching the video uh, without actually doing anything so all as always i ins insist that you have to practice because programming is about practice programming is like exercising it's like going to gym it's like going to judo class or uh, going to a karate class so keep on practicing and one good thing about programming is that you can do it in ac ac room sitting and without moving so whatever benefit you want tell me okay now that jokes apart let me go to the browser if you guys are new to the uh, new to uh, this series you can actually take a look at the uh, take your big data cluster for a spin series or if you want to own your own big data cluster also you can take a look at uh, uh, look at this series uh, this uh, series of playlist the point here is that uh, you don't actually need a big data cluster to practice whatever i'm going to show you so you can actually get this done using regular kaggle environment itself so just relax you can use kaggle environment that right from your browser and you can uh, you know master it master uh, big data commands i am not telling that you can actually execute big data jobs for executing big data jobs you will need a cluster i am not denying that what i am trying to say is that to master uh, to understand the pyspark ecosystem to understand how the spark uh, files work etc you can use kaggle notebooks so this is the kaggle notebook that we will be using and uh, i have already you know uh, the same challenges that i am uh, working on the presentation i have updated it here what i will be doing is i will be going through this notebook right now i will not be uh, coding it step by step okay uh, what i request you guys is that take this notebook fork this out you can fork the notebook by uh, when you actually get the link you can fork the notebook once you fork it uh, keep uh, before you even fork it right create a new notebook you go here you create a new notebook and in the new notebook start going through this video and start typing out whatever the video is talking about don't copy paste it also start typing out at that time what happens is that you will actually find certain problems okay you will actually miss something you will uh, do some kind of a uh, error in the typing it could be a very simple things and one more important thing the data sets the most important thing is to get these data sets okay this notebook that i will be sharing comes along with the data set in kaggle everything comes along with the we can uh, uh, you know this is a kind of a notebook is kind of a docker environment where you can attach the data set the uh, set up everything together the data set and uh, all these things will come along with this okay but when you are going to open a new notebook then this data set will not be available so you have to search for this data set you, when you click on add data you can search for customer data set and data backups data set and add it in your new notebook and then you can do all these things so keep trying okay as you do these things only you will learn and kaggle is one of the most 
I mean, in fact, I learned about data engineering, working with data analysis uh, from Kaggle only. So it is one of the most beneficial and useful environment that I've ever come across. Make use of it uh, uh, when you are when it is uh, you know when they are actually sharing it. So this is one of the best environment. With that said, guys, we will start right now by installing pip. It, uh, by uh, using this first cell by default the session will not have started okay so the session doesn't require any of the gpus any of the even it doesn't uh, uh, require the internet connection also you can you can remove the internet connection but that doesn't make any difference here so uh, you can actually keep the internet connection on or off so you can take a look at these things if you are new to Kaggle environment it's a basic notebook that we are running okay and uh, if you if you click on this play button the actual uh, code will start executing the code inside the cell will start executing the point uh, i want to make is that first of all install the pyspark library inside the uh, kaggle notebook kaggle notebook is kaggle docker notebook okay once you do that the the you know, the library will be available for you to start using then we are going to import the spark session we are going to import the sql functions and we are going to import warnings so this is a very very important two lines which is going to save you a lot of scrolling so warnings will the filter warnings ignore will stop showing you warnings which uh, which comes regularly if the python libraries are getting updated so if you are using an older version of python library then there will be warnings so such warnings uh, can be avoided if you are using this import warning so yeah better do that it cannot actually stop uh, spark from throwing warning because this is coming from java so all these warnings are coming from uh, java and uh, scala environment so that it cannot be convert uh, you know controlled by these guys these two these two libraries now first and foremost we have to start the spark session spark session is a jvm inside the spark environment this is right now running inside the java inside the docker notebook and docker notebook is quite uh, huge guys <laughs> so it is having a ram of almost uh, up to 30 gb of ram oh, sorry sorry uh, it, it has a ram of almost uh, 12 to 13 gb i suppose and it can go up to cpu of uh, cpu has almost four cpu vcpus are given to you so it's one of the best uh, uh, things available so you can run most of the things here uh, very heavy files also you can run the first one, uh, the first thing is that if you have been working through the series then you must be knowing that i had used uh, sorry i was i have used the customer data set to begin with so if you have seen the earlier uh, uh, videos so i'll be using that first and uh, in order to in order to start importing so first and foremost we need to read the file in okay so if you are new to the series then you might be wondering okay how did i even get this schema where did i get all these things from kindly review the earlier videos in this playlist which is part of uh, which this video is part of you will understand what is going on here okay but anyway so you just continue uh, you just import this uh, uh, types and uh, what basically is happening is i am creating a kind of a schema like how we create in postgres we create a table schema right we use uh, create table and start creating a schema that kind of a schema we can also create it here inside the uh, jupyter notebook and then we can take this entire schema and we can assign it to when we are going to read the uh, read the csv file read the data set when you are going to so i the data set is available in kaggle so if you go to the kaggle node uh, it is actually inside the customer data set so you, the, here is the data set so if you click on this uh, locate click on this copy path file then it will actually give this path so you don't need to even type it so header is going to be true and schema is the updated schema that i am taking from here and all these column names if you ask me how did you get it just take a look at that what actually happens is that initially when you start the start the actual process right what happens is you don't use this schema equal to updated schema we say what we say is instead of that we say infer schema is equal to true okay when we use this option what will happen is the table the data set will get read and the column names etc will come automatically so you will not give the schema like this so after i get the uh, uh, after i do this infer schema then i do uh, i actually use this option customer df so i create that df and i say print schema 
okay when i do the print schema what will happen is i will get uh, okay instead of even you know printing schema what we can do is i can say schema just a minute so when we actually uh, when we read by using infer schema and when we try to get the schema you will get the schema like this you can print the schema also when you directly ask for this particular attribute schema attribute you will get the entire uh, this uh, entire data that we have actually created here right you can get it by using the schema on the data frame directly so this one i have already explained it so i am just doing it again uh, since uh, we, you might actually come here directly also uh, to this video directly so uh, that is a good thing that uh, i uh, i want to explain it here anyway it will not be there in this uh, let me actually do that so let it be there in this uh, let the uh, just a minute guys so i will update the notebook in such a way that okay the print schema and the schema uh, will also be available so that uh, it will be helpful for you guys when it comes to uh, spark data frame there are almost four different i mean five different way to select the columns and uh, you might be wondering okay why to have five different ways each have their own advantages each solves a problem first and foremost the select function the select function is uh, simply going to select whichever column names you provide and it will select when it comes to with column what will happen is it will select and it will actually create a new column also so you select it and you change something in that column and then you can create it as a new column as an additional column and we can use select expression instead of using select commands select functions series of select chains of functions we can use select expression i will show it to you one by one and we can actually use select and expression together so uh, this also we will see as we go uh, as we discuss this uh, steps and we have spark sql select also so in order to get the spark sql select you have to first of all convert the data frame into spark table so we will see that also all these things we will see step by step in this video first and foremost we have to look at the columns so we saw the schema here the schema is different schema actually gives you the column uh, names also and it gives you the type of the column and also the constraint on the column currently in in spark tables you cannot constrain the column effectively so i think nullable can be uh, nullable constraint can be enforced on spark but we cannot enforce the primary or secondary key uh, constraint on the spark table at this moment so still it is a uh, work in progress inside the spark uh, library so these are the column names so keep this uh, in handy so even if you are going to work on a new data set first of all get the columns so that you will know what columns you are going to select and the simple select function is to select the column name so you know the column names and you select it and you say uh, always use a limit okay i will show you why in a minute in in couple of uh, 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 as we go through this video you will understand why limit is very important because the number of rows is very huge so i will show you how many rows are there in this data set not in this data set in this customer df it's just 2000 rows so it's not very big but in another data set which will work is actually having a huge uh, uh, very huge number of rows as it, as you can see here we are uh, we are working with the three columns and we get the three columns out if you change the column order okay so if i say for an example if i ask for gender first and then for the then uh, if i ask for the customer id what will happen is the columns will get switched automatically so irrespective of how the column is inside inside the actual uh, data frame when you ask here it will get switched so it will not get error it will not throw an error or anything so it will automatically switch next select expression so we saw select right this is the basic next we are going to see select expression so here we are going to give expression directly so we here we actually used gender customer id and age separately but here we can give select expression and we can create expressions on top of it expressions means we can do calculations we can do uh, uh, you know uh, logical checking so you can do all those things and you can uh, get the value output from that so here i am actually adding three columns age spending score and family size and i am getting it as column sum here and annual income i am dividing, dividing it by 1000 and i am getting it as income in k denomination this is what is called expression so you can do 
you can work on the columns directly using the expressions okay next is select with expression inside that so what happens in the previous in the previous select expression you saw that you don't need to give expr uh, command separately uh, the function separately but when you want to use it with select so you you want you have other columns uh, that you are uh, working on and so for an example if you have uh, actually we can do this way also so if you have an age like this okay as uh, i can say alias trial age okay and i am going to also in the meantime i am also get going to get this also so if i am going to do this what will happen is the uh, the both the activities both the column age will also get populated here as trial age and the expression also will get executed so in case of if i use select expression right i will have to do everything in the same way i cannot change it so this is an additional way of actually doing the expression uh, uh, chaining the expression along with the select this will be useful in other locations so here if you see that i am using the sequence function inside here so what i have done here is so let me actually you know uh, remove the truncation if i say truncate equal to false uh, sorry truncate equal to true wait a minute uh, this is a confusing thing so yeah if i say truncate equal to false it will actually show me the entire list here so you by creating the sequence i can uh, use the entire uh, i can create a sequence as a uh, in each cell so uh, this sequence will be also useful if we go and explode it so as we go down you will see that this sequence command can be used in uh, conjunction with many other uh, data that we get from the data frame itself so we will see how to use that so right now we have seen how to use select how to use with column how we have not seen with column so with column i will come in the next step we have used expression we have used select expression right now we are going to look at the uh, here we are seeing how to actually use it uh, with the uh, other options so what is happening here is that we can actually create a sequence by uh, first of all getting the max age min age and then we can use those two options and put it inside the sequence also as min age and max age you, this is the benefit of using select plus expression so uh, this will take this is little bit advanced don't worry about uh, this if you are not able to understand it you have to practice it with other options other uh, you know uh, columns out there you can try it with annual income you can try it with uh, the uh, family size etc and see how is the output coming out okay you will understand better but as of now if you are not getting this it's okay finally this is the important point i wanted to say sometimes we want to actually partition a particular uh, we want to partition a table in a particular way okay we want to use some kind of a uh, hash partition or we want to bucket it or we want to you know make a group by but the problem is for an example we have this uh, let us say profession and we want to split this so we want to say uh, take the only the first five letters of all the profession and we want to keep it separately for partition if you are to do that then at that time we can use with column so what it will do is it will actually keep the entire data frame as it is this is the complete data frame okay up to family size and the for partition will get attached newly so this with column can be used when you actually import the data set also this is one of the prime advantages like when you go up here when you are actually importing the reading this file right at that time itself you can use with column i am not putting i am not explaining this with column uh, example here because it is actually advanced so i am not doing it here but you can do it okay i am just giving you the idea here i will be discussing that in the uh, when i am discussing partition options so that you will also understand what is going on and this is very very useful when you are going to work uh, with uh, when you want to convert the uh, when you are working in cloud and if you want to convert uh, the files that you have got into in, into series of folders right then you can use the partitioning option inside the uh, spark i mean pyspark uh, function i will be showing that because it's one of the most important uh, activity you will save a lot of time actually 
okay so this is how you actually do the uh, selection so you this is for last uh, 20 uh, 10 minutes we have been discussing only about select select is so versatile that by using that is that uh, command itself you can do a lot of analysis okay apart from that we have other uh, options also but select mastering select mastering with column expression etc is a first challenge that everybody has to solve okay i hope that uh, this uh, you know uh, this is clear for you guys if you have any questions do you know leave a comment we will further discuss i want to introduce uh, the explode option here explode option i will again discuss separately also so the list that you saw above right this can be actually exploded and it can be made to become column so whenever you explode a particular uh, uh, whenever you explode a particular uh, uh, say a particular column what will happen is it will take the list inside that column and it will convert uh, it will take the list inside that cell and it will convert it into columns it will convert it into a new column so th that is what is happening here so i am creating the expression here okay you saw the expression i had created above and then after that in the same command i am signing that okay with the column that is created here as new sequence okay create so i am going to explode the new sequence column i am going to say okay create me a new, uh, another column called as age sequence using with column so you see the age sequence getting created here. so it is 0 2 4 6 8 so this is uh, this is actually you know very confusing to work with in the beginning but once you master this you will never <laughs> you know leave this so you use explode in most of the uh, challenges you will face and explode is one of the important uh, concepts also i will try to uh, discuss uh, separately on a, on a single video about the explore how we can use it and also sequence also so these two things i want to discuss separately but since here i am working on select i wanted to introduce this also okay finally the important point i told you there are four ways to work with the, till now we have not even created spark table so we have been working with data frame only we have been working with spark data frame for all this time we still have spark sql so sql is its own it has its own power so whatever uh, whatever selection you are doing here it is all based on sql commands sql functions only because if you go up you will see that i am importing the where is it i am importing the pyspark.sql.functions import star so this means that i am importing all the sql functions that is written inside the spark environment this is not same as your postgresql or it is not same as here my mysql it is totally different so if you are new to spark then you have to go to the getting started getting started page i will be sharing this link also with you guys inside the getting started page if you go then you will see that sql reference click on sql reference the sql reference is what you have to refer this sql reference not postgresql or mysql it will not work those functions are completely different from what the functions have been written inside the spark environment or inside the spark uh, uh, product okay so uh, you can go through this uh, the various functions here <clears throat> as i told you there are lots of functions and all these functions are various challenges and uh, i have taken the functions i have understood the functions and they are, then i have uh, placed these functions here for you to practice uh, so if you are facing any new challenge then you have to go to those functions and check it okay and most probably you will find the answer so if you have a challenge then you should go there that is how it works okay now that we have uh, uh, we are actually deciding to go into spark sql what we have to first of all do is we have to create a spark warehouse so spark warehouse will get created by default okay you might be wondering uh, kamal we are nowhere in spark cluster so how is this going to even work so in case of uh, spark what happens is if there is no cluster the spark warehouse gets created in the local file system itself so you can actually check out my other videos where i am discussing this point so it will get created in the local local file system and you can use it without uh, any challenge and on the warehouse only you can create the database so if i execute this create database if if not exists so when i am using it in jupyter notebook right what happens is sometimes i have to execute all the cells in a sequence so if if the when the cells are getting executed in sequence and if the sequence hits this cell and if i don't have this uh, uh, if not class and if the database is already existing then this cell will error out and uh, the sequence will not continue 
in order to avoid that i am using this clause if not exists okay so if i execute this you will actually not get any output uh, you will get just a data frame as output and you have to use the data frame uh, you have to use the new database that you created and then all you need to do is you have to use customer df dot write dot save as table this is the only step you have to do and once you write it then what will happen is you can actually use the mode overwrite again the, for the same reason so if i am going to execute in sequence if it hits this particular cell it will overwrite the file again so it will overwrite the database again and once i execute this okay now if you go to kaggle environment and if you look at this kaggle working you will see that there is a spark warehouse and inside this spark warehouse you give it a moment you click on this it will take some time give it a moment you will see that there is a database which is also a folder again inside the database you will find uh, that we can we have already created the customer underscore tuto table so all this would have done already okay so it will take little time in, in case of uh, kaggle environment so let it be there as we explain so we have already written the table now so you see you see this select underscore db and inside that there is actually one more thing will be there it will come in a moment so you will see that it is customer underscore tuto uh, table but all these things are actually folders so database uh, the warehouse itself consists of lots of folders and the spark program is done uh, i mean written in such a way that it can efficiently read those files inside those folders keep uh, you know this is a concept that gave me a very different perspective about big data and uh, that is when i uh, actually understood a lot more about the entire uh, big data ecosystem okay so as this is going on i okay we have right now written the file so written the table i know the table name is uh, customer tutorial and now it is all sql so if you know sql then you can start working on this table as if it is an sql environment and what is the error coming what is the error here so if you see the ca column annual income does not exist do you mean the following so what has happened here is that in my case i actually changed the entire column okay i actually had to follow this schema right i had to follow this schema correct but i did not i actually showed to you guys that i am going to infer schema so i cannot use this infer schema anymore so i have to remove that and you see this this is all this is having gap here but if you see this schema there will not be any gap so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say use uh, i'm going to say schema equal to schema equal to the updated schema so this one i want this error was uh, required so that you guys can understand what is going on okay so i execute this and then and now if i do a print schema right you see that my schema is totally different so you see there is no gap and next what i have to do is i have to come down here and i have to rewrite the table so i have to rewrite the table so i am going to rewrite the table now i have overwritten it and now if i execute so you see the error is coming that it is not able to find annual income in the csv file it's okay so uh, the error will not be a problem and after that if i execute this now there will be no issue so you see that it is able to select properly so this is what i, I was you know explaining to you guys and uh, the yeah i am fa uh, just a minute let me actually retry this now i suppose that it should be able to show me the database as well as the table always let us give it a time so this is what i was trying to say so uh, since uh, i want to keep the videos uh, short i would actually break the videos into parts in the next video we will actually look at the null values and uh, you know working on date format etc so for working on date format and null values we have to use a different data set all together so i will be explaining how to select those data set also i will be showing it to you guys so that you also will know how to work on that selecting data set for training is also something that you need to learn right uh, uh, that is how you can actually master the skill of if you are going to do a data analysis for yourself or uh, you know uh, how to say doing an exercise for yourself you have to you have to think uh, that okay what kind of uh, skill i need to improve and then you need to exercise on that skill 
so it will be much more easier for you if you understand what i am doing so this step is very crucial so i will take it as a next uh, next video where we will discuss this point so let us go back to the pdf as i was already explaining uh, so all the data set the table everything is provided to you guys uh, so all you need to do is uh, just go to this particular uh, link that i am sharing and start practicing the uh, PySpark commands in the uh, Kaggle environment and uh, as uh, as I always insist that do a lot of practice so that is the only way to you know master this uh, uh, technology so once you master this technology you can use this in various locations so uh, it's not just that you will be using it in uh, only in software industry you can use it in very various uh, different industries because most of the things are getting in uh, getting digitalized these days not digitized it is getting digitalized so a lot of things are you know moving from uh, a physical world to digital world so you will need the big data anyway so start working on this so do practice guys i hope that you like this uh, video and uh, do share it with others subscribe to my channels for the further videos as i upload it it will get updated to your youtube uh, uh, youtube dashboard directly so with this i would always close with the four words practice 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 see you guys have a nice time